set me free. Happy Advent and Merry Christmas, you brood of vipers. Wow. John the Baptizer is not any staff parish committee's idea of a perfect pastor. He preaches repent. He wears clothing of camel's hair. He wears clothing of camel's hair. He eats locust and wild honey. That would present problems for covered dish dinners, don't you think? <laughs> oh, no, don't eat John the Baptist chicken fried grasshoppers. No, no, no. It may have mashed potatoes and gravy. But, ugh, crunchy is not what you want, my friends. Not crunchy indeed. And his message is problematic in the extreme. You brood of vipers, he says, repent. He doesn't tell the congregation how wonderful it is. He doesn't laud it for its great outreach programs and its wonderful nurturing ministries. He proclaims, repent. Change your ways. Literally change your mind. That's what the word repent means. It means to change your mind. Change your way of thinking. Change your opinion. Change your approach to living. Change what you're doing. Change the way you're thinking about And he's not gentle about doing it either. After all, he uses that phrase, brood of vipers. Who warns you to flee from the wrath that is to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say... To yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For God can raise up children to Abraham from these rocks over here. He doesn't need you. Yikes. Ooh. We don't like to talk too much about repentance, do we? If we're talking about repenting, that means we're going to have to admit that we have something that we're doing that we realize we need to change. That we need to stop doing something. And that's not fun to talk about. We don't want to talk about the need to repent, the need to change ourselves. We don't want to talk about that. So we talk about something else instead. Indeed, we usually talk about other people needing to repent. We talk about the things that they need to stop doing and the things that they need to start doing differently. I may be overeating or not being paying attention to what I should be doing, but let's focus on what someone else is doing. The, the brood of vipers over there, let's focus on what they're doing. And we can talk about them for a while. And maybe they won't notice what we're doing over here. John the Baptizer was right. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven has come near. We love paying attention. I love paying attention to parts of speech. The word repent here is in the imperative case. That means it's a command, not a suggestion. It's not if you think it might be nice, you could change some things. It's not if it's not too much trouble, you, would you mind changing something? No, it's an order. It's a command. It's an unambiguous direction. Repent. Change your mind. And the implication is you change your mind now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not next month. Not next year. Right now. And why? Because the kingdom of heaven has come near, has come near. It's the, here's a wonderful phrase. We don't normally talk about this. It is in the perfect active indicative. Now, English teachers are out there scratching their heads even. The perfect active indicative. That means that the action is completed, but still going on. Huh? It means that what you're talking about 
has been done, and the state of it having been done is still in effect. The kingdom of heaven come near. It's here. It's not coming in the future. It's not coming tomorrow, next week, next month, or next year. It's not coming in the sweet by and by. No. It's here now. And because the kingdom of heaven is here, right here, right now, we must, not they must, we must repent. We must change what we're doing, change our mind, change our opinion, change our point of view, and orient it towards what Jesus would have for us to do. We've got to change because the kingdom of heaven is here now. Hmm. I thought we had some time. I still got some shopping to do. Boy, do I still have some shopping to do. Thank God for Amazon, but my Lord, I have shopping to do. If it's right now, I'm in trouble. Uh-huh. We all are. John the baptizer may not have been the kind of pastor that any church would be looking for, but he's the kind of prophet that we all need to hear. He's the kind of person who speaks for God that we need to hear because he reminds us that the kingdom of heaven isn't about tomorrow. Christ is here right now. And yes, we may be preparing for his returning clouds of glory. And yes, we may soon celebrate his birth in Bethlehem of Judea over 2,000 years ago. But right here and right now, today, the kingdom of heaven is near. Right here in our midst. And what we do and what we have to do and what we are called to do is be ready for it. And we make ourselves ready for it by changing. Oh, I don't like that, Greg. I don't like changing. Fine, I don't like it either. But you know what? If you don't change, you're probably dead. And we're not dead. We have a chance to live. We have the calling to live. And we have the presence of the Spirit of Christ within us calling us to change. Amen. Thank you. And we've got to change. The power of the Spirit of God moves in and through us to transform and change us. And it changes us into something that we don't expect. That reading from Isaiah is kind of weird. Especially there at verse 6 and following. It says, The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall leave them. This is unexpected change. Change that goes outside our expectations, our ability to comprehend that God's change in us and in this world with the coming of the kingdom of God changes everything. From violence and oppression to peace and tranquility. From war and evil to peace and righteousness. God's grace, God's transforming love changes us. The Christ child changes us. Jesus can and will change us. Jesus resurrected from the grave. Jesus buried in the tomb. Jesus, who died on the cross. Jesus, about whom we cried, crucify him with our every sin. 
Jesus, who with Judas we betrayed in the garden. Jesus, with and of whom we ate at the Last Supper. Jesus, with and of whom we feasted in his teachings. Jesus, who healed us. Jesus, who called us. Jesus, who was born for us. This little child who leads in the transformation of the world can transform us too. Can change you and me. And we need change. We need a new way of looking at each other. We must have a new way of looking at this world. We must look at this world and this community and this church as the presence of the kingdom of God here and now. And that little child who we will celebrate in his birth is the one who died for us on the cross. And that one who was raised from the dead, that one changes us and makes repentance possible. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let us be open to the change that Christ has for us. Let us be open to the grace of Jesus Christ that can and will Call us and enable us to repent. Call us and enable us to change. At Christmas, we celebrate His birth. In Advent, we prepare to witness His return in clouds of glory and then celebrate that birth. We prepare for change and the coming in of the kingdom of God. A kingdom that is already here in the presence of Christ. As we continue our preparations towards Christmas, as we prepare to sing a cantata, as we go to Christmas parties, as we go shopping for Christmas presents, as we prepare for good times with our families, as we prepare to reach out to others who are in need through the Angel Tree program and other programs to help people who have so much less to have a bit of celebration in their lives too, As we make all these preparations, let us be ourselves prepared for the Christ child, the crucified and resurrected Lord Jesus Christ is ready to change us. All we have to do is repent, turn, and follow His love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may God's people. In your presence.